Hello guys and welcome back to Alan Coco Science Show. If I do this, just know that we are being swarmed by mosquitoes, which is really exciting. It's been raining a lot here. Um, but just pretend I'm still cool, okay? Great, so today I wanted to talk about mermaids. You are correct, Clut. As far as we know, mermaids are not real. And this is not like a, oh, the ocean's so deep, we don't know what's out there kind of concept. It's more like scientifically, biologically, really hard to have the whole half human, half fish look going on. Today, I thought it'd be fun to talk a little bit about mermaids and some mermaid stories and then talk a little uh, science. So let's get into it. So first, where did mermaids come from? Ah, clever girl, Miss Monkey. Yes, mermaids are found in the ocean. But it's so cool because we human beings have been fascinated by mermaids for thousands and thousands of years around the world. And originally, I was gonna talk about all these different stories because I just got caught in like an endless loop of like, wow, this one's cool, this one's cool. And so I, it, it just became too much. I will be leaving links in the description of this video where you can go see some of the other mermaids in the world. But one thing I do want you to take away, just like this mind boggling fact, is that we have had mermaids in art and history since at least 3000 BC in ancient Babylon and they can be givers of life and fortune, or they can kill you if they don't like you. They can look like what you might consider to be a classic mermaid with a single fish tail and human body, or they can have two tails, serpent or bird bodies, or like in Japan, they can be mostly fish with a human head. And again, they're all over the world from Thailand and Zimbabwe to Brazil and Ireland. There's a lot of mermaid diversity out there. So I decided today to focus more on the present day mermaids that we've seen in literature in more recent times, just for a fun exercise, you will see. So these are some of the ones I've picked out for us. So of course we have the classic half human, half fish mermaids like the Little Mermaid, but I also want to add a similar looking mermaid to the mix, the ones from the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean. They look like Ariel, but they're the kind that attract sailors using their singing and then drag them into the ocean. Ah, uh, they're so cool. Another type of mermaid are the ones that are from the Harry Potter world that live in the lake. Uh, we also have the sea creature from Creature from the Black Lagoon and the Shape of Water. They're not really mermaids, but they're similar, so we'll talk about them. My personal favorite mermaids are the ones from the 2004 live action version of Peter Pan. They're a little spooky and super cool. We also have the girls from H2O that got their mermaid powers from the moon pool at Maiko Island, the 13th year, and Luca. I just love Luca, so yes. We're also including selkies in this because there have been a few movies like Song of the Sea and The Search for Roan Einish that I grew up with. Uh, selkies were seals that would turn into women, have families, and then sometimes go back to the sea. And finally, the Starbucks logo mermaid, Coco. Have you ever heard of the Tree of Life? No, it's not an actual tree. The tree of life is a representation that we've created that shows how all life on earth, whether living today or extinct, is connected. And it can show all of our common ancestors. So every living thing on the planet shares one common ancestor. There was some point billions of years ago where something was alive. And now we have all this. It does sound complicated because there's a lot of life out there that we have to make connections to, but it also can make things easier because we're able to map out how we're all related. We can do like really fun things like see how closely related me and Colette are, who our common ancestors are, or our common ancestors with a pineapple. So Colette, you are related to a pineapple. Very, very distantly related, but you are. Yes, all life on Earth is related to a common ancestor. Isn't that cool? From the tiniest bacteria to the biggest blue whale, we're all related somehow, and some of us are super closely related, like human beings and chimpanzees and bonobos. And a lot of people will actually think we're further evolved from chimpanzees, like we're a more evolved species. I hate this picture. The reality is we have a common ancestor and both branched off from there. So neither of us is more evolved than the other. We're all on our own separate evolution journeys. And the common ancestor between two organisms are represented by a node on a tree where lines meet. And lines coming off of them are called branches and these lead to your different organisms. 
Sometimes in good diagrams, the branch length will be based on a passing of time. So like millions of years, give or take a day. It is a lot like a family tree, because if you think about it, if you go up through the branches of the family tree from individuals, you are going further and further back through generations, and you have common relatives, kind of like a common ancestor. And you might share some traits with those near you, with those from the past, but you're also evolving different traits. And you're sharing their corresponding DNA for those traits. It's kind of cool. So we are gonna be making a phylogenetic tree, a tree of life, for the mermaids that I talked about previously. And unfortunately, I don't have any mermaid DNA unless Colette, do you have any mermaid DNA on you, sweet thing? That's okay. We're gonna have to do this the old fashioned way, just looking at traits, and that's fine. Now, this is just my interpretation, just based on the traits that I saw. Um, they are mythological creatures, so, you know, it. you might, if you were to do this at home, you might have a completely different tree from me, and that's okay. Okay, I'm going. So just looking at the mermaids from the modern day selection, uh, I decided that looking at the traits, they probably had a more fishy mermaid ancestor because yes, a lot of them have the human top half, but a lot of them retained many fish characteristics. Um, so we're starting with a more fishy common ancestor. So I kind of put them in groups like, oh, these turn into humans sometimes. I made like little Venn diagrams or like a, a bunch of different matrices. Does this one have webbed hands or not? Does this one have tail, tails? Um, <laughs> so that's how I kind of broke it down to kind of have it make sense to me. So the first one I felt broke off from the rest are the mermaids from the Harry Potter series. They retained a lot more of the fishy characteristics. They don't have human hair, they look scaly, they have gills. Also, they spend their whole life in the water. They do not come on land, so I decided to put them here. Then we had a clade branch off that are more human-like. They lost the tail, they're more amphibious, and they kind of come out of the water. Uh, here we see the creature from the Black Lagoon and the Shape of Water guy. These two look a lot alike. In fact, Creature from the Black Lagoon inspired Shape of Water. Both have a very human-like stature, but again are amphibious. They have gills and webbed hands. They separate as different species to me because the Creature from the Black Lagoon is larger, less streamlined, and with no visible markings, making them different species. Then we have yet another clade branching off, and the reason they're different from the three we've already talked about is that they will have human characteristics when they're dry. Now the type of creatures from Luca are different from the rest because they still have a lot of amphibious traits, as well as four legs. I couldn't figure out if they retain gills or go full on human, do they have lungs when they're underwater i don't know there's a lot of questions i have so many different ways you could go about this uh, today they're going to be in their own category just because i'm not quite sure about their breathing patterns in and out of water and then we have the other mermaids who are human-like when they're dry and they're more mammal-like this includes the mermaids from H2O who yes i know they weren't born mermaids so technically they don't have the mermaid dna and they got their mermaid powers through magic. However, I was watching H2O just add water with my cousins a couple weeks ago and I wanted to include them so bad. So for the purpose of these exercises, they have mermaid DNA. They're predisposed to getting mermaid powers. These girls have lost, they don't have webbed hands and they look very much like your classic mermaid, but again, just add water or dry off and you're a completely different form. Separate from that, we have mermaids that will turn into a human or mermaid form at life stage dependent times. This is where I put the guy from the 13th year who was 100% human, water did nothing to him until he was 13 years old. Very awkward times. And separate from that, we have the highly derived selkies. They turn into adult women at a certain point and then they may turn back into seals at another point. It's not dependent on water and it isn't dependent on puberty or anything like that. Okay, so after all the switching and metamorphosizing, mermaids evolved to be more permanent in the water, half human, half fish. 
I mean, we're just having fun and technically they're all made up, so. So we have a separation in those that have webbed hands, my girls from the Peter Pan live action, and those that lost their webbing. Of the ones with no webbing, the ones from Pirates of the Caribbean and the classic mermaid are closely related. They look a lot alike. However, the ones from Pirates of the Caribbean I've separate, separated into a different species because in my mind, they use their mermaid singing abilities for uh, killing. I don't know, maybe they eat the men? I don't know. And I feel like the other mermaids are more like chill. They're just hanging out with their fish friends. I don't know, do they? Do mermaids eat fish? I bet they do. Moving on. And finally, we have the Starbucks mermaid who has a highly derived trait of having two tails. Now looking at this chart, you might think, oh, the Starbucks mermaid is more evolved than the Harry Potter mermaid, which is not true. They're just differently evolved and they have common ancestors along the way. Some have just retained a lot of maybe fish characteristics and some have just evolved to be more human-like or to be shapeshifters, which I think is so cool. And sometimes you will see traits, you know, evolve out and then reappear. Like think about our webbed hands. The, the creature from the Black Lagoon had webbed hands and they evolved out to not have webbed hands. And then the Peter Pan mermaids had webbed hands again. It's so cool. And that does happen in real life, not just like mermaid world. So that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Great. Again, I'll be leaving links in the description to some of my other favorite mermaids and nymphs and sirens and all sorts of things. Also, last minute I didn't include Ponyo. I love Ponyo. I do consider her a mermaid. Yeah, I, I love mermaids. They're so freaking cool. And if you want to have a bit of fun, make your own tree of life with mermaids or maybe another type of mythical creature, go ahead and try this out at home and you can tag us on social media at Ali Coco Sci Show on Instagram, Facebook, we're also on Twitter a little bit, and TikTok. So um, you guys can share your mythological tree of life or your mermaid tree of life. I would love to check those out. That's a great question, Claude. So are mermaids real? I know at the beginning of this video, I said that they weren't and that it was scientifically impossible, but I know a mermaid. My friend Aisha is a mermaid and I, I'm gonna leave her Instagram. You need to go follow her. She's like super cool, awesome, beautiful. And she really drives the message home that a lot of mermaids today are trying to push this idea of conservation in these like bodies of water. I used to live in San Marcos uh, and they would have mermaid festivals and mermaids swimming in the river and trying to teach people to keep the rivers clean, which is so important. There's so many different mermaids out there that are really want to teach you guys about conservation. So check out Aisha, check out, you know, any friends she might be talking about over there. Check out some mermaid Instagram, mermaid TikTok. It's beautiful. It's such an art form. So awesome. And there's a whole conservation message to it. So do I believe in mermaids? Heck yes. Um, so for the question of the week, I want to know if you were a mermaid, what would you look like? What would your story be? I've decided since I hate cold weather, I would have to live somewhere warm. And I'm thinking I would be either like around the coast of like West Africa maybe, or I would be in the Amazon River. And if I'm in the Amazon River, I wouldn't have long hair because that would create a lot of drag and I'm a girl on a mission. I would have like a shorter haircut to make me more streamlined and because the Amazon River is a little murky, a lot of like dolphins there, they use uh, solely echolocation and will have poor vision. So I probably wouldn't have good vision, but I would go to um, dams that they're building and I would like stop the dams from being built. And I think that would be my thing. Colette, what about you? What mermaid would you be? A dogfish. I love it. So don't forget to comment down below if you were a mermaid, what would your mermaid life and backstory be? I would love to check those out. Feel free to find us on our social media at Ali Coco Sci Show. And if you do make your own mermaid tree of life or other mythical creature tree of life, be sure to tag me in that. Like, I really want to check those out. Check out Aisha. 
Her Instagram handle is right here, Mermaid Aisha, and I will leave a link down in the description for that as well. And we will see you again next time. Bye. I just realized the whole video, the cicadas were loud, but also look at this mushroom. Look at this mushroom. It is so cool.